now let's talk about mobile testing and explicitly espresso. And why do we use uh, espresso? Uh, in general, there are several test mobile testing frameworks. Uh, those are Appium, Espresso, UI Automator, Robotium, and Calabash. Espresso and UI Automator are official frameworks by Google. Uh, Appium and Calabash are used by for both Android and iOS testing. Uh, these numbers rep represent uh, tags usage on Stack Overflow uh, throughout all the time of all questions. First column is a tag which represents the framework itself. And second column is the single tag, uh, which is called Android dash and framework. Uh, so you can see that Appium is the most popular tool. Uh, if you will look at the last year tags usage, the same Appium leads the game. Uh, but we should remember that Appium and Calabash are also for iOS testing. So these numbers represent, I mean, in the first column and the total column is affected. Uh, these numbers represent both iOS questions and Android questions. Uh, so I have done some correction. These are two tags connected with AND, and those numbers are a bit, a bit less than total uh, questions. Uh, but still, even with those corrected numbers, Appium is more or less the most popular framework. Uh, if we will look at the GitHub statistics, Appium uh, also has the most popular repositorium among all of those. But we should know that Google, uh, both Espresso and UI Automator, it's single repo for both of them. And it's used not as a repo of the framework itself, but as samples how to use this framework. So there are no contrib contributors. And obviously, there are uh, far less uh, watchers, stars, et cetera, et cetera. So why do we use Espresso in our team and not Appium? Because Appium is used more for black box testing when you don't have source code, when you act on a third party APK file or for iOS, uh, another type of file. Uh, we, we, we own this product, so we act on our product. Uh, so we can use the source code, we can use white box testing. And Google uh, officially recommends Espresso as testing tool for Android applications. Um, Appium underneath uses UI Automator, UI Automator, and let's look at the execution speed. This is simple test which creates a new uh, list item and opens it and verifies that everything is correct. Uh, seems quite fast, but let's compare it to Espresso. The same test, but with our progress bar, we can see that es sorry, Espresso was two times faster than UI Automator. It's 2.7 seconds, 5.2 seconds. Uh, so Espresso uses, I believe, lower level solutions. So let's talk about Espresso more. Uh, in test content structure, uh, you can test everything from expectations to assertions. So basically uh, following given when then BDD approach. Uh, it's quite intuitive and easy to learn. Uh, speaking about level of knowledge, uh, Google claims that you can use Espresso as a black box tool. Uh, so it's easy to learn, low uh, level uh, to start this, uh, I mean, low effort to start writing tests. Uh, but also you can use it as a white box tool. Uh, so it will remain open for customization and you will exploit full power of the framework. Uh, for the very basic tests, and if you are a complete novice in this, you can use Espresso Recorder and record uh, some tests. I'd like to mention that this block is a single action uh, recorded by Recorder, and the whole test contains several of those actions. It's quite long. Um, but interesting thing that it even creates uh, some extra functions that are embedded in those tests. Uh, but nevertheless, the test contains 89 li lines of code. It's quite big and it's only a single test. If we will rewrite this test manually, uh, when we know what we do, it will be 13 lines of code with empty lines. It's much more concise uh, and easy to read. And in one class, you can have lots of those tests and don't have, you won't have 
clone class. Um, starting to write your tests as a black box tests, you may use a uh, matcher with text and provide some string. Uh, it's quite easy, it's quite obvious on the screen what you're searching for, uh, but it's not very uh, explicit and targeted because it will find the first occurrence of this text on the screen and it may be not the button you want to click. Uh, and afterwards you want to check, obviously when you click a button some another screen will appear and you want to check for example a title and it will be the same robot one. But uh, another person who will read this text, uh, test, uh, for those person it will be unobvious what are you trying to click, what are you trying to check, because those matchers are the same. Uh, so when we will write the same tests in a white box style, uh, you may use IDs, those are exactly IDs you will need to use, and those IDs are different, uh, it's much more readable, and uh, your tests won't be flucky, you will point exact uh, element on the page, on the screen you, you need. Uh, so this will be rob robot name and this will be some robot input field. Uh, and you may even rewrite those tests using robot pattern we use. Uh, it was described on the quality questions number one by my colleague. Uh, it's much more readable than using IDs inside the tests. Uh, this way you separate uh, ID of the, uh, of the screen and the test itself. And here you can see only actions and it's very explicitly written. Um, between those searches for elements and actions, Express has uh, some synchronization. Uh, it has uh, implemented out of the box uh, implicit weights. Those are done on the main UI thread uh, by those method. It's used uh, under every perform action and the check assertion. Uh, but also you can write your custom uh, idling resource for some custom weights, some background uh, asynchronous tasks, for example, downloading something, something uh, HTTP requests, etc. Uh, but don't worry, uh, out of the box synchronization will cover most of your needs and only for some specific reasons you will need to write something special. Uh, but even if you'll need to write something special uh, custom by yourself, don't worry, it's not e uh, too hard you will need to override three methods and moreover uh, first method is very generic, it's some string, you can use class name, you can use some object hash, etc. Uh, last one is also generic, you just assign in a variable and the main thing goes here when you're checking if your uh, action has finished and if your st application state is idle uh, so the main complicated logic you will write here. Uh, this is, this uh, checks if your test is idle, are done automatically each five seconds. And unfortunately you may not uh, influence these timeouts, it's always five seconds. Uh, and even for some very short waits like 200 milliseconds, you will need unfortunately to wait for the whole five seconds. But you won't wait for, for eternity, because after 26 seconds you will have timeout exception. Uh, Sorry. But this is... We'll have to wait once more. But these 26 six seconds are configurable, so you can wait less or you can wait more. Uh, Espresso has built-in island resources you may use. Those are very easy. It's counting idling resource, URI uh, idling resource, and thread pool executors. Uh, but we will cover only the first one, which is the most basic and most helpful. Uh, it follows semaphore pattern. Actually, it counts uh, some, some counter. Uh, it uses increments and decrements. In your requests, for example, HTTP requests, uh, in some methods you may uh, put increments, in other methods you may put dec decrements, and uh, that is idle method will uh, validate if the counter is zero. When it's zero, it means that every increments were decremented and the app state is idle. Uh, 
Also, Espresso has web sub-module for web testing like Selenium. It's, it could be very uh, common for you. Uh, you may test web pages inside your application. It could be hybrid applications with embedded web view, or it could be links that are opened in Chrome tabs inside the application itself. Uh, definitely those pages are better to be tested separately, but whoever may need to test this. Uh, Espresso Web operates on WebDriver Atoms, uh, so this part, uh, it will be find element. Those are locators that can be used to find element. Uh, again, those are very similar to, uh, to Selenium ones. Uh, moreover, Espresso can test contracts with third-party apps and the system. Uh, it will validate uh, or stub intents sent, sent by application. Uh, those will look like assertion that, for example, this intent is opening browser with Google.com, and second one is opening uh, your caller application. Those are different types uh, how to assert the intent. And basically those are like mock validate and it's also quite common. Uh, but Espresso is very pow powerful, but not everything can be done with it. And some differences we have with UI Automator and sometimes we have to use UI Automator. First difference is a system back button press. In Espresso, it looks like this. Uh, Espresso dot press back, it's quite intuitive. Uh, but when we will press this back button from root of your application, uh, you will have no activity resumed exception because Espresso works uh, on activity. It should be active, it should present. And this way, when you click back from root, you will close your activity. Uh, so this will lead to expression uh, exception. When you will press back, however, fr not from root, but from some stack of screens, uh, it will be perfectly okay, your test will run to completion, and you will achieve what you want. Uh, the same story, but written in UI Automator, has this common uh, line of code, common method, press back. It works uh, irrelevantly where you uh, invoke it, and it won't crash your application, it will work. But Espresso has similar method, it's another method, it will press back unconditionally uh, whether you are in root or not. Uh, you won't uh, receive any exceptions. Your test will uh, finish. And uh, doing this, you may even automate some hard scenarios like restarting your application because this way Espresso will not crash. Uh, second difference with UI Automator is screen orientation change. Uh, and actually, with first difference, we could use Espresso in every situa situation. Uh, here are real differences breaking changes, and you have to decide whether you need to use Espresso one uh, or UI Automator. Uh, Espresso has such method to rotate your screen. Uh, in my next slide, there will be a video. It will be very fast, but we are trying to rotate the screen and open some system UI, it will be recent apps menu. So we will see how it looks like. We are rotating screen, and when we open recent apps, the screen is rotated back. Uh, this is done because of Espresso actually rotating your, only your activity, not the whole device. And uh, initially your activity was rotated, but when we are triggering uh, some system UI, it will be rotated back to the portrait orientation. And when you use UI Automator method to rotate your device, it will actually rotate your device. And we will see how it looks like. You are still in rotated mode. Uh, the whole device has been rotated. So in some tests, you may need to use UI Automator if you want to rotate device itself. Uh, next difference, and the most important one, is uh, working on system and third-party apps. Actually, Espresso cannot press any other buttons than back. So it cannot press home button, it cannot press recent apps button, it cannot work 
uh, effectively on system UI and on third-party UIs. Uh, for these reasons, you may need to use UI Automator. Uh, but still, we use Espresso as our main tool in testing because it's quite fast, uh, far more faster than everything else. It uses uh, code itself. Uh, in Scrum team, we communicate with our developers tightly, so we can ask them how to where we should trigger our assertions, it, where it will be more properly uh, to assert something, where we should uh, inject our uh, idling resources, those idling methods, etc. So sometimes you will need to use other tools than Espresso, but mainly Espresso is quite good. Thank you. If you, feel, if you have any questions, feel free. Thanks. We have a question there. Have you, have you ever experienced any improvement while testing through this Espresso app between the native app and the native application? You mean hybrid? Yeah. Or third party, not our app? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, Android application and that's a React native or PhoneGap or whatever. We haven't used Appium at all. We just combine in Espresso and UI Automator, but actually I believe that Appium is more or less similar to UI Automator. Uh, our app is more hybrid, uh, and in some end-to-end -end tests we do use uh, Espresso Web, for example, for web pages in those uh, web views. But it also has many native screens, uh, so we are okay with, with having Espresso as our main tool. One more. No. As you showed, you showed like this way for like idle and it takes five seconds each time. So it doesn't actually wait five seconds or it actually wait for some event to happen and then it's done. Uh, for those idle resources, uh, it actually waits uh, for, the, for that event, but triggering of these rechecks are done each five sec seconds hard coded, yes. But you may extend those timeout to several minutes, for example. 